uh, ecotourism. More than 150,000 people visit Yellowstone annually, specifically because of wolves. They bring $35 million to Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming each year. Okay, you're going, well, Yellowstone is a national park. It brings lots of money in. Uh, it's different. Little town of Ely, Minnesota, where they have the International Wolf Center. It's a tiny town, really small town, uh, not much larger than many of our towns around here. Added $3 million to the local economy just in 1995 and created the equivalent of 66 full-time jobs. Now, tell me what town in this UP would not give anything to have 66 full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're not utilizing that for ecotourism, for wolves. Uh, this photo is an interesting photo in that, I forgot my pointer in there. There's a fissure in the tree right in the front here. And there's a wolf uh, all curled up out here. So now the pilot wasn't able to stay long enough to know if that fissure uh, was, who, who, yeah, if the wolf got the fissure to come down or when the fissure came down or if the fissure, there's possibility now that that female or the animal that's outside there, there may be pups in that den. That fisher may be trying to get at the pup. Is one of the things that we were looking at. So people sometimes say to me, a few wolves are okay, but if you do the math, um, the wolf population is going to explode. But reality is pup mortality is very high. It's not uncommon for having 70 to 75 percent of all pups die in one year. Um, you're going to have some packs that are going to lose all their pups. You're going to have some packs that all their pups are going to survive. But overall, very high uh, mortality. There's also high mortality of um, adults. 30 percent of our pups will die, or uh, the adults will die in, a, in any given year from all kinds of causes. And now that we can manage wolves by killing problem wolves, uh, that mortality rate's even going to be higher. But as prime wolf habitat becomes occupied, territories become smaller, wolf populations stabilize. Uh, this is a pack of wolf pups over by Mass City, Gardner Road. They had a rendezvous site right near the highway there. <laughs> We have all kinds of ongoing research to help farmers. Uh, this was a study a couple of years ago where Pyrenees dogs were placed on six farms in the UP. Um, and the one farm near me that still has one of the Pyrenees, uh, the other Pyrenees has since died, there were no depredations on his farm. He had had a depredation in 2001, got the dogs, kept all other animals off that farm, including he saw a higher incident of ground nesting birds, again, because you were keeping the coons off it. Uh, those dogs just kept everything off that property, including the wolves. And now that pack has learned to avoid that farm. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also donkeys. Um, and a federal grant provided funding for non-lethal measures at 18 farms. 25 donkeys were placed on the farm. We left the AK-47 <laughs> off of them. But um, they do, uh, donkeys do not get along with canids, and their natural instinct is to keep all um, wolves, coyotes off that farm. We also provided seven fencing projects. There's a howling box project. And what this is about is it creates a recording of howls. Uh, wolves use howling as a way of saying a uh, territorial barking. This is my territory, stay out. And so they'll play these howls on farms, and the wolves will go, okay, that, there's wolves over there, I'm going to avoid that area. And that did work on a couple of 